Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 36 lecture of this course. In the previous lecture, we have computed some algorithms and some procedures pertaining to the solution of the system of equations ax is equal to b. In continuation to that, today we are going to do some applications, how these applications directly related to scientific and engineering prospective. Let us look at into the application of symmetric positive definite generalized eigenvalue problem to decoupling and modal reduction. See that all of us know very well there are many systems in engineering where we do come across the applications of matrices in different contexts. In this particular lecture, we will mention few engineering applications of the generalized eigenvalue problem and we would like to consider decoupling of a second order system of equations and also we wanted to consider modal reduction. As far as the first example is concerned, let us look at into decoupling of second order system. In the decoupling of second order system, the first case is the undamped system. Vibration problems in structural analysis may be modeled by a homogeneous system of second order differential equations of the form m times of y double prime plus ky is equal to 0. Look at this y double dot is nothing but y double prime which is d square y upon dt of 2. y is a set of values or vectors y1, y2, y3, yn transpose and k is a constant matrix. Similarly, m is also called as mass matrix. So, terminology is m is called mass matrix, k is called stiffness matrices. Assuming that these matrices are symmetric and M is positive definite. We will now show how the simultaneous diagonalization technique described earlier can be employed to solve this system of second order differential equations. The idea is to decouple the system into n uncoupled equations so that each of these uncoupled equations can be solved using a standard technique that is P is equal to P be the modal matrix such that P transpose MP is equal to I. P transpose KP is equal to omega which is nothing but diagonals of omega 1 square, omega 2 square, like that, omega n square. Let y is equal to pz. So, the homogeneous system my double dot plus k of y is equal to 0 becomes mp times of z double dot plus k times of p z will be equivalent to 0 or z double dot 
plus omega z will be equal into 0. Denoting z is equal to z1, z2, z3, zn transpose equation 2 is a set of n uncoupled equations zi double dot plus omega i square zi is equal to 0, i will be from 1 to n. zi double dot plus omega i square zi will be equal to 0 for i is equal to 1 to n. The solution of the original system 1 now can be obtained by solving these n uncoupled equations using standard techniques and then recovering the original solution y of the form y is equal to p into z. Thus, if the solutions of the decoupled system equation 2 are given by that is z i is equal to a i times of cos of omega i t plus b i times of sin of omega i t i is equal to 1 to n. Then the solution of the original system equation 1, so it can be written as y1, y2, y3, yn will be equal to p times of a1 cos omega 1t plus b1 sin omega 1t, a2 cos omega 2t plus b2 sin omega 2t. So like that you will have a n cos omega n t plus b n sin omega n t. The constants a i and b i are to be determined from the initial conditions from the initial conditions for instance y i that is at t is equal to 0 displacement at time t is equal to 0 y i dot at t is equal to 0 initial velocity at t is equal to 0 dy by dt is the initial velocity. Now with this we can model a simple example. We will illustrate the decoupling technique with the following mass spring example. See the figure of 3 degrees of freedom spring system decoupling. Look at over here. This is the mass 1, this is the mass 2, this is the mass 3 and this is the K1 spring constant, this is the K2 spring constant, this is the K3 spring constant. So Y1 corresponding displacement, Y2 corresponding displacement, Y3 corresponding displacement. The equations of the motion are MY double dot plus KY is equal to 0. The equations of the motion are MY double dot plus KY is equal to 0 where Y is equal to Y1, Y2, Y3 transpose and M is the diagonal matrix of M1, M2, M3 and K is a matrix which will have K is equal to K1 plus K2 minus K2 0 minus K2 K2 plus K3 minus K3 0 minus K3 plus K3. So this is what the consolidated stiffness matrix. Now for instance take M1 is equal to 2 into 10 power 4 kg. M2 is equal to 3 into 10 power 4 kg. So M1 is equal to 2 into 10 power 4 kg and M2 is equal to 3 into 10 power 4 kg. So K1 is equal to 
K2 is equal to K3 is equal to 10 power 9 times of 1.5 Newton per meter. Then the natural frequencies are given by W1, W2, W3. So they are all 10 power 2 times of 4.4168. 2.8951 0.9273 Suppose that the system when released from rest at t is equal to 0 is subjected to a displacement then we would like to find the undamped time response of the system the initial conditions are y is equal to y1, y2, y3 transpose that is 1, 2, 3 transpose and y dot is 0, 0, 0 transpose. Since the initial velocities are zeros, we obtain y i dot is p b i w i is equal to 0 for i is equal to 1, 2, 3. These equations give b1 is equal to b2 is equal to b3 is equal to zeros. Now again at time t is equal to 0. We have from equation 3 y1, y2, y3 that is p times of a1, a2, a3 that is 1, 2, 3. So that is y1, y2, y3. The modal matrix P corresponding to the natural frequency is given by P is equal to 0 0.0056 first element minus of 0 0.0040, 0 0.0017 minus of 0 0.0034 minus of 0 0.0035, 0 0.0031, 0, 0, 0, 0008, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, now the solution of this linear system is p is equal to p times of a1 a2 a3 will be equivalent to 1 2 3 that is a1 is equal to 6.1816 a2 is equal to 50.6264 a3 is equal to 705.2650 substituting these values of a1 a2 a3 and the values of omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 obtained earlier we would be getting like this y1 y2 y3 is equal to p times of z1 z2 z3 that will be p times of a1 cos omega 1 t a2 cos omega 2 t a3 cos omega 3 t the values of y1 y2 y3 give the undamped time response of the system subjected to the initial conditions. So, we will have second case that is damped systems. Some damping such as that due to air resistance. So, because of the air resistance, there would be a fluid and solid friction takes place. Is present in all structures let us now consider damped homogeneous system. Let D be the damping matrix. You will have a damping matrix. Then the equations of motion of the damping system becomes like this. That is M times of Y dot plus D times of Y dot plus K times of Y is equal to 0. Assuming D is a linear combination of M and K that is D would be written as 
alpha times of m plus beta times of k where alpha and beta are the constants. Damping of this type is called proportional or Rayleigh damping. In physics point of view, this kind of damping is called proportional or Rayleigh damping. Let P be the modal matrix, then we will have P transpose dp will be same as alpha times of P transpose mp plus beta times of P transpose kp will be equal to alpha i plus beta omega. Now what is this z? Let z is equal to P transpose y. Then the above homogeneous damped equations are transformed into n uncoupled equations. So they are transformed into n uncoupled equations. So you will have this equation z double dot plus alpha times alpha plus beta times of omega i square times of z i dot then omega i square z i dot will be equal to 0 for i is equal to 1 to n. In engineering practice, it is customary to assume modal damping that is alpha and beta are chosen so that alpha plus beta times of omega i square is 2 xi i omega i. So as you know very well in the case of vibration mechanics and other mechanical applications, the number xi i is called the modal damping ratio of the ith mode. The quantity xi i is usually taken as a small number between 0 and 1. The most common values are xi lie between 0 to 0.05. However, in some applications such as in the case of design of flexible structures are taken to be as low as 0 0.005. On the other hand, for an automobile shock absorber, so if you have an automobile shock absorber, a value as high as xi is equal to 0.5 is possible value. Well, assuming modal damping, the decoupled equation 4 become this equation zi double prime plus 2 xi i w i z i dot plus omega i square z i will be equal to 0 for every i is equal to 1 to n. The solutions of these equations are given by z i is equal to e raised to power minus xi i omega i t multiplied with a i times of cos of omega i square root of 1 minus xi i square t plus beta i times of sin of omega i square root of 1 minus xi i square t i is equal to 1 to n where the constants a i and b i are to be determined from the given initial equations. The original system can now be solved by solving these n uncoupled equations separately and then recovering the original solution of y from y is equal to p times of z. So if you look at this 2 degree freedom of spring mass system, non-proportional damping, you look at here there is a k, there is a k over here, there is a 2k and a d1, d2, d3. 
m 2 m. So, essentially it is 2 degrees of freedom spring mass system non-proportional damping. And what is the remark over here? We have just seen that if damping is proportional then the system can be decoupled. Unfortunately, however, the concept of proportional damping is more theoretical interest rather than practical. Systems can always be constructed whose damping cannot be proportional. We said few example over here. Look at this example, non-proportional damping. So consider the following system with two degrees of freedom. Look at over here. These equations of motion of the system are developed by considering a free body diagram of each mass. Look at this mass. So this is the ma mass and di yi dot k y1 d2 y2 dot minus y1 dot k times of y2 minus y1. So this will rise to m times of y1 double dot. Thus the equations of motion of the mass is this thing minus of d1 times of y1 dot plus d2 times of y2 dot minus y1 dot minus k times of y1 plus k times of y2 minus y1 will be equivalent to m times of y1 dot double dot. So similarly the equation of motion for the mass 2m is given by like this minus of d2 times of y2 dot minus y1 dot minus k times of y1 plus k times of y2 minus y1 minus 2k times of y2 will be equivalent to 2m times of y2 double dot. Thus for the whole system we will have the matrix like this. So this matrix is m 0, 0 to m and this matrix is y1 double dot, y2 double dot and this matrix is d1 plus d2 minus d2 minus d2 d2 plus d3 and this matrix is y1 dot y2 dot and this is the matrix 2k minus k minus k to 3k multiplied with y1 and this will be equivalent to 0 0. Now let us take k is equal to 2 m is equal to 5 d1 is equal to 2 d2 is equal to 4 d3 is equal to 1 for a simple case. If the relation d is equal to alpha times of m plus beta times of k were satisfied then there would exist alpha and beta satisfying the equation like this. So this 5 alpha plus 4 beta will be equivalent to 6 and 2 beta is equal to 4, 6 beta plus 10 alpha is 5. However, the above equations cannot all be satisfied with any set of values of alpha beta. This is a case of non-proportional damping. Proportional damping is not possible in this particular case. Now let us look at into the damped system under force excitation. When a damped system is subjected to an external force capital F, the equations of motion are given by m y double dot plus d times of y dot plus k times of y will be equivalent to f of t that is f1 t, f2 t, f3 t, f and t. Assuming that m is symmetric positive definite, k is symmetric and that damping is proportional 
it is easy to see from our previous discussion that the above equations can be decoupled using simultaneous diagonalization. So when you use this simultaneous diagonalization, we can able to find out. Let for the case of simplicity, let P is equal to Pij be the model matrix. Then the uncoupled equations will be given by this system. Zi double dot plus 2 Zi i omega i Zi dot plus omega i square Zi will be equivalent to P1 i F1 plus P2 i F2 plus etc. P n i F n or you can write it as Zi double dot plus 2 Zi i omega i Zi dot plus omega i square Zi dot will be equivalent to E i t where E of t is given by summation j is equal to 1 to n p j i f j where i is equal to 1 to n. The function e i t is called the exciting or forcing function of the ith mode. So, which we call it as forcing function of the ith mode. If each force f phi is written as f phi is equal to f phi of s t, then e i t is given by s t times of summation j is equal to 1 to n p i j f j. The expression summation j is equal to 1 to n p j i f phi that is is called the mode participation factor for the ith mode. Once the uncoupled equations 5 are solved for j z i, the solution of the original equations are given by y is equal to p times of z. So we will have a remark over here. So what is the remark is the solution of the uncoupled equations depend upon the nature of the force f of t. For example, when the force is a shock type force such as an earthquake. So normally you know very well the earthquake comes very quickly. So it is abrupt. So how do you capture these abrupt properties via the matrix computations? One is normally is interested in a maximum responses. The maximum response values of a Z1, Z2, Z3 can be obtained from the responses or a single equation of degree of freedom. Also we can see the reduction of a large model. Many applications gives rise to a very large system of second order differential equations. Look at this equation m y double dot plus d y dot plus k y is equal to f t. We will now show how the computations can be simplified by using only the knowledge of a few eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Suppose that under the usual assumption that m and k are symmetric and of order n and assuming that the matrix m is a positive definite that means all the eigenvalues are greater than or equal to 0, we are able to compute only the first few normal modes perhaps m of the equation when m is less than less than n. So let the matrix of these normal modes be written as n by m. So then we will have p transpose mp will be equal to the identity matrix of order m or m. p transpose kp is that is omega mm that is diagonal of omega 1 square omega 2 square omega m square that is omega 1 square omega 2 square omega m square and these are all zeros. Now let us set y is equal to pz, the damping is proportional to mass or stiffness. So the system of equations can be rewritten in this following fashion, where ei is the ith coordinate of vector of the p transpose f, once the small number of equations is solved, 
then the displacement of any mass under the external force can be computed by using this system of equations. So, today lecture what we learned is any physical systems of engineering interest can be boiled down into a system of equations of the form y is equal to pi and once you transform into yi is equal to pz i then we can use matrix factorization and so on and so forth. So, I will stop over here today we will have a two different examples of uh, engineering interest. I am sure that they will enable us how matrix equations can be solved and factorized in order to find out a best approximations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again.